Hey yo, it's Guido coming at you with a map room. I'm finally getting back to it again. We have Empire's Border here. Empire's Border. We're doing this alphabetically. Probably the map I'm least familiar with. It's the newest map in the game, I believe. I guess Stidzianski may actually be newer. I'm not really sure. But this one is interesting because I don't, I'm going to be quite honest with you, I don't have a really good handle on this one yet. But we'll talk about how I play it. Standard stuff, we'll go through the deployment routes, typical class positions, early shots where you can get those, the critical terrain, high risk, high reward areas, non-standard win options as possibilities, look at a general battle flow, late game considerations and crossfire flex opportunities during the game, and hey, if you're winning, what happens, and oh my gosh, I'm losing, what should I do? So let's take a look then at Empire's Border, one of the newest maps in the game. I don't know, is it the newest? Somebody tell me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could be Stidzianski. All right, here we go with the blue. We'll start down here with the red team coming out of the red. Now, this is a very canalized, channelized funnel map. It's it's probably the the worst kind of map that's in the game. I'm going to be quite honest with you. With all these gigantic dead zones everywhere, a middle area that looks interesting to play, but is really a death valley, and it gives you basically two routes. So it's Anyway, we, we won't get into it. It's almost unbelievable that, that they made this kind of map yet again. But anyway, you're going to come out here. If you want to go north, then the deployment route is up this way to about right here where you come up to the edge and you've got a bit of a flat spot because you're going to have some enemies show up on the other side. We'll talk about that in a minute. You could possibly blitz, and I get this to do it, across to here. But that's a little bit dangerous because you do have crossfire from over in either direction. Another way you can peel off and you head up right along here for lights and mediums. We'll show the class positions later on. And there's multiple spots to include right in this position. Some spots here, potentially some spots along here or here. All four spotting into the flat area there. Do not really recommend... Do not really recommend anything that comes into this area to begin with. There is a possibility to come up to here and look to counter guys from the other side that might be doing it, but that's very dangerous early on and it's hard to get out of. If you get pinned down there, there's nowhere to go because what this map doesn't show very well is this is a very high area right here and this is a very high area right here. And especially in the case of over here on the east, attempting to drive up this way and get away is going to be very difficult without being shot by the green guys on the other side. So that are that are those are the standard deployment routes coming to the north. Then you've got the south, which is a completely different fight. And again, why these kind of maps are terrible with these giant dead zones and channels. But the other deployment route is right along here and then coming up to the top or peeling off and coming up to this other spot. We'll talk about this fight in a little bit. The other possibility then is coming down here. You can either come up to a ramp that's right there or you can go around to the outside to another spot there and wait for the corresponding push from the green side. There are also possibilities of TD camping spots right there. And those are the general deployment routes. RD will, as, as a general rule, go back into this area right here or potentially into this area right here. <clears throat> the green side is basically a mirror image from the other side obviously from the northwest then you can truck along here for this northeast flight fight or flight come up here to about that position where the ramp ends and now you can get hold down spot and you can sit there and snipe at each other in your mediums of light tanks to your heart's content the other possibility is to peel off and come up to face anyone who might go there again this is a a lower percentage kind of play right there but the possibility is there and of course you can come along this area post up here is one possibility now this side the north has better positions for kind of the overwatch you can come up to here another place because of the hard cover why this side doesn't really have any hard cover is a question that uh, remains unanswered the other possibility is to come up into about here to hide behind this rock or even push up to this rock here so there are multiple spots on both the red side and the green side to stop coming up along here but really the green side especially for this position 
in this position here just simply have a better position. There's a couple rocks and some buildings and other things you can hide here, but as a general rule, this is much more swept by fire than the green side. Unfortunately, it is quite unbalanced. If you're gonna head down to the brawling area, obviously you can come right down this road and you can come to this ramp, or you can go around and come to this corner and play punchy face. This is a great spot. Oops, this is a great spot right here for hold down fighting with good depression and then just your big fatties punching each other in the face. You can peel off, head up this hill, come up to that spot for again hold down fighting or peel off and come up to here. There's also an option to come around to this rock here as well and there is a mirror image sort of TD spot that's hiding out right here behind this rock. The thing about these two shots, we'll talk about these two points, we'll talk about shots in a minute, but they have shots up into this higher area to some extent. Not great shots, but some. RD on this side are going to be in this area, kind of this area, and potentially over here, so they can get shots either up into the northeast or down here to the southwest from the green side. RD, unfortunately, on this map has almost nowhere to go. It is all just slight variations of hanging out in the corner they started in. <laughs> I tell you, this map, I it's it's bad. The map is terrible. It's <laughs> if I actually if I actually uh banned maps, it would probably be this one. <clears throat> I'm just gonna have a little taste of apple juice there. Alright. So those are the typical deployment routes. Now let's go ahead and get into class position. Starting with the red team, what you're going to see your heavies do is come to here, come to here, here, and here. So that's actually a pretty decent amount of choices. There's actually a possibility, and we'll talk about how the game flows, to go up to here with your heavies, especially fast ones, say a 277, or any kind of really mobile heavy. Although a lot of people will take their slow heavies up there the problem with that, again, we'll get into it later, is that is such a long drive. By the time you get up there and get anything going on in the northeast, usually the fight down here in the southwest is over. But those are all possibilities. Mediums can come up to here for sure. Uh, here, here, potentially here, depending on the speed. I've, you can also bring mediums up here, and you can bring them here. So as far as places where heavies and mediums go on this map, it's actually pretty good peanut butter spread around where you're going to see these things go. Light tanks, on the other hand, you're going to find them up here, potentially in this area, and all along through here, as well as up to here. I'm also going to throw mediums here. I'm going to throw mediums here, coming up into this bottleneck. But that's a slightly later game, or potentially there's no, there's no enemies up here in the north, no opposition. That's going to give you the freedom to drive up and over through this bottleneck and shoot guys in the side. But... You have to make sure there's nobody up in here that's keeping either the, either they're kept busy or they haven't come around this corner or they're not hanging out over here because you can really be shot in the back right there. But that's kind of a mid to later game consideration unless the green team does something really bizarre. So your light tanks are going to be really up in the north along here in this scouting area, potentially moving up to the bottleneck. I don't really recommend them down here in the brawl. Although if you're a brawling light tank and you want to be in there and be an annoying guy, you could potentially go there. TDs. Depends on the TD, to be quite honest. Fast TDs can follow up with their heavies and mediums and lights if you get a good push going up to the north. There are some TD positions to kind of hang out back in this area towards the back, potentially. And obviously, you've got the TD sniper point. Assault TDs can do okay down in this area down here. And the same thing really applies to coming up on the top here. Uh, you can see T95s, T28s, and things crawl up this hill. It's quite the long drive. This is an uphill drive, but you can move them up here as well. So they'll, they will be uh, doing a decent job. I've seen them back in here. I don't really recommend it. That is just waiting for the game to be lost before you do anything. And as I said, the artillery is going to be somewhere in this back. I think this back corner is about the best spot to put artillery. And you've got the same thing from the other side. You got, as far as heavies go here, oops, we got green ones on oh my gosh. What are we doing? Here, here, potentially around this corner, opposing here and opposing here. I'm going to actually put one back here behind this rock. And you will sometimes see people go to here, but I don't recommend that. So I'm going to actually delete that because that's the camping position. 
There's one camping position back here and a camping position back here, which I don't recommend because your gun's out of the game until it's lost, basically, or the rest of your team has won it and you've done nothing. So let's just not speak of it again. <laughs> Potentially heavy to come up here. For the mediums, again, same thing going up to here. You can get mediums into these positions potentially up to here and just like at the bottleneck coming to here. Mediums here with good depression and good turrets can do a nice job here. Same thing over here and potentially mediums attempting to be annoying on this area right here. I will say that there is a potential for a heavy back in this area. There's a rock back here and I think there's actually one a little bit closer. It might be this one right here. I'm thinking of places you can kind of hide behind. You'll also see them see you guys who are sneaking up against the wall right there and kind of trying to poke around you'll see a, also a corresponding i also forgot i want to make sure i show you a spot right there potentially for heavies kind of poking around as well so we're back to mediums there for the green team got them right there yep coming up to this point and along this point light tanks same thing as the red team you're going to see them come up in this area quite a few of them potentially here potentially there up into this area here and here for spotting, sometimes a little bit further back right here. And then obviously if you want to be the annoying light. In general though, light tanks don't have much to do down in the southwest. For TDs, you've got the TD hill here. You've got this position, potentially this position. If it's a salt TD, heading up the hill with the rest of these guys, potentially over here and over here or hanging out in the back over here. Again, this camping spot, if the red team pushes up and over, or if you're on the red team, the green team pushes up and over, you might have shots. I will say that this position back here against the, the walls here, hiding around the corner, is more viable than the red side because the red side really has to expose themselves to shots in order to even push. The green team pushing down into the red has to actually come around this corner before the corresponding TD spot back here around this little promontory becomes useful so as a general rule it's a little bit harder to push north as the red team if you've got TDs sitting back here and I think you'll find more green TDs kind of hanging out here than you will red TDs back in this little corner here but it does happen and then as far as artillery goes like I said there's just some positions back here really anywhere back around here depending on the slight angle you want to change it for as a general rule already is punishing this area and this area with the occasional shot up here if they can get an opening on guys and that's pretty much it they can shoot along this edge if you're the green or along this edge if you're the red but they're not as good as shots as say just blasting the poor heavies doing the uh, derp alert -a ding dang right there so those are the typical class positions that you will find on this map let's take a look at where you can get some early shots All right, where can you get early shots on empire's border it's a bit tricky it really is you can find some early shots across here, across to potentially here. You can actually get up top here and maybe catch somebody moving up to you. If you can get up to the top, you may get early shots at guys who show their side, especially if the green team comes across. From there, those are all possibilities. The early shot potential down here in the southwest is he who gets there first. You can actually get up onto this promontory and you might get shots on guys coming up the problem is it's quite flat up here and depending on your speed if they're close enough to, to come over the top you've raged up there to take a shot you might get caught out sitting there so be very careful about coming all the way up here and just trying to blap people as they're coming up the hill but it might be worth looking at if you've got a fast medium with a good turret to eventually get a couple free shots at least one and then back off the edge here while you wait for your heavies to come up and support you so there's free shots there another dangerous one is to come raging along here get up on this little ridge first and try to take shots on slow guys who are slow to get there both of these though you have to play it by ear if you're immediately opposed by their fast medium or heavy you may not have the shot that you want there's also a possibility to come up to this ridge and get an early shot on their guys coming up over the edge right there the last possibility and it's not necessarily an early shot it's going to be kind of later shots but if you can get your TD here and you find one of their mediums coming up real fast up into the flat area you can get early shots right there it's really just a mirror image from the other side guys same thing with the TD shooting here same thing getting up in the top and trying to shoot their guys coming in same thing coming up to here and trying to shoot their guys approaching same thing over here trying to get their guys that come up top first you can also get shots on their guys being unwise 
crossing over here and then return shots from anyone who gets spotted light or medium wise who's working along this edge all early shot possibilities and if somebody's unwise enough to get in this area then all these areas have the same shots into there as they do across to the corresponding ridge line right there for artillery where do they want to aim in from the green side depends on where you see your scouts go if you see scouts really raging up this road you may want to pre-aim into areas like here or potentially over here especially if they can get there quick enough you may catch guys going up the hill if you get your scouts in this position and then you may have some free shots on them as they're in this open area here same thing applies from the other side you might get shots over there i will tell you though it's easier for <clears throat> the green side to spot the red tanks going up here than it is for the red side to spot the green tanks going up in this area here. So just be very careful on the red side, especially if you're a slow heavy and you're crossing here a little bit late and this is already a developed fight, you have a very good chance of being spotted and blapped by artillery right there. The other artillery shots are going to be onto the top. Get the right color here. Artillery shots up onto guys hanging out on the top or potentially pushing up to here. Possibilities there and then from the red side, same thing. Artillery shots into here and here. This is going to be difficult for the red artillery to hit unless it's coming around the corner. And unfortunately, there's a bit of an imbalance. The green artillery has a really nice time shooting guys who are coming up to these corners from that direction there. So those are where all your early shots are going to come from. I also didn't show you there, obviously that and that from the green side as far as how fast somebody comes up there. So those are all your early shot opportunities. Let's take a look at the general meta. The general meta. General meta is that this is the main fight right here. So you're going to have the green forming their lines here. They're going to form their lines here. The red doing the same thing on this side. And really, this almost this entire map is won or lost right here. We'll talk about the lower percentage play. There is some utility and importance to making sure that from the red side, this is not lost really early. And from the green side, this is not lost really early. Because what happens is if they move up, if they move up and are able to get shots into the side of this brawl, either side of these, that's very bad for the guys who are brawling. All right. So if the green team comes up here and gets shots into the side of the red, or the red team gets up here and gets shots into the side of the green, that's going to help determine who wins this fight, which means something has to at least be watched or neutralized by each team on this area right here. It can be very dangerous. This fight up here, I'll just use orange since it's not a color we're using. This fight up here is largely inconsequential and is a low percentage play. Are we going to talk about this? I'm just talking general meta. We'll get to the high risk, high reward plays in a minute. But as a general rule, this gets fairly stagnated and is unimportant to winning this map, except for a couple situations, which we'll cover in just a bit, in just a minute. That does not mean it does not need to be watched or contested. But if you make a large push up into the northeast, you're going to have a really hard time winning the southwest. And unless you make this, unless you take this advantage, and translate it pretty quickly into a push or potentially a push back to the middle, then you're going to have a lot of trouble winning this map. That is the general meta, unfortunately. There's a small corner of the map that matters. This is largely a dead zone in the middle. There is a possibility of a strong push up in the northeast, but as a general rule, the northeast is relatively useless to winning this map, unfortunately. And that's what you get when you get these kind of channelized maps. That is what you get. All right. Let's see. So we've talked about critical terrain. Let's get the high risk, high reward, and we'll go ahead and just jump into the non-standard options. All right. High risk, high reward areas are going to be this right here and this right here, because I've mentioned it several times, and then the ability to get into this choke point. If you can push up there early and get shots on the side, that's pretty good. But you're really risking shots coming back into your back from here or even from this area potentially or up into here from either side. I'm just using the same color. So that's, that is one high risk, high reward area right there. The other one is taking a push from the red side and coming up along here, destroying everything very quickly and pushing into their cap. 
then coming back through here for screening, maybe jumping on the cap, depending on what's going on down here, or pushing through and completely flanking the, the green forces who are still fighting down here. The same thing, exactly mirror images with the green, coming up here, winning this fight, pushing down to cap, and then either screening coming in here or pushing in and flanking the red forces who are up on the hill right here still fighting or maybe down here. The problem with that low percentage play is it usually takes a very long time to develop and frankly it does not take a lot of red we'll just find them here TDs kind of hanging out here or here or here to stop this green push or any other tank to be quite honest same thing for the green you're probably going to find a TV here you may even have some guys going back hanging out here and it's very easy to kind of stuff that push especially if they try to go further than the cap the problem with getting on the cap is there's so much cover we're just going to undo this real quick the problem with trying to cap through this kind of flanking move is that there is so much cover this corner this corner this rock they can drive up and get behind the rock. So if you're trying to cap on the cap, it's very difficult to do so. You're out in the open. It's hard to stop guys coming back from this direction from decapping you. The same thing applies here. It's not quite the same as far as the rock goes, but there's the buildings that are in the way, especially this group here and this group right here are very easy to E and E through. You've got this little promontory edge you can move up to, and this is a very exposed cap to any of the green team coming back in and resetting the cap which is why that is the whole thing is just a very low percentage play. If you can get a good push, you can win quickly and get right to their cap and you can get all the way back around and take their guys from behind, so to speak, or potentially either through here or from behind the directions you're coming in there. That's very good, but rarely, if ever, not if ever, rarely, it does happen. Rarely does that develop fast enough that this fight isn't already lost because if you've peeled that much force, to come up and around whichever side that you spawned on then this right here is really weak and you're probably in trouble right there you're probably in trouble right there so that's really the only non-standard win option that there is in this game this big long looping flank or just brawl it out here in the southwest and then worry about picking off the stragglers from the flanking maneuver Okay, battle flow is really important on this. So I, I've spent a little bit of time poo-pooing the northeast, and I, I know what a lot of you are thinking, that you're saying, well, what happens is teams win down here in the southwest. Say the red team pushes in here, and they win, and then they push to cap. And meanwhile, even though this northeast has taken a while to develop, the green team actually did pretty well and comes raging down here with four or five lights and mediums, and they cap you. Okay, valid. It is a consideration to worry about. So, that being said, what do you do? As far as the general battle flow goes, you send your main forces down here and to here as the red team. Once you win this, you assess. If you have lost up here and it looks like they're coming at you, then you go back to cap. There's no reason, let's use the dash line, we'll use the dotted line. There's no reason to keep on trucking into here if you've lost up here. So you go back, 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 and you defeat whatever's pushing in there. You may eventually, you can potentially come through the middle here to kind of put them in a pincer if you've got enough forces to do so, or to relieve any pressure of the green team who may be in the middle right there. But this, this does get lost, this map does get lost by people as the general flow goes by winning down here in the southwest and failing to assess what's going up, on up here in the northeast in the middle. If there's any kind of threat to your cap being threatened, just go back, sort it out, or potentially go into the middle and deal with the guys that are up here. Well, that's the general flow. The exact, the exact same thing is from the green side, guys. There, there's really nothing else to say. You send your, oops, what are we going? To, ah, dee dee dee. We need the normal line. Send your guys up here to this main area. Send them down here to this main area and duke it out. Once you see what's going on, find out if you've won or lost up here. If you've lost in the Northeast, then get on your horse and reek, go back to cap or potentially push through here and defeat the push coming from the red team as they attempt to come in 
or through here to your cap. Okay, that's what you do. If you have won in both spots, obviously you can push onto the cap. What you need to do from there though, either side, if you win in both sides, be very careful, especially if you're low on hit points, on not paying attention to what's going on in this area here. Okay, because what I have seen happen is you get, start pushing towards cap and then you get arsehole by these guys flowing up and coming in behind you. Okay, so be very careful about what's going on right there. Even if you win the Northeast and the Southwest at the same time, watch out for that, especially if you're low on hit points or low on numbers. Okay, and that is your general battle flow. So let's look at crossfire and flex. Be quite honest, unfortunately, the crossfire opportunities are fairly limited on this map but I've shown you a couple of them. You've got shots from here up into there. Same thing from the other side. I'll just use orange for all the crossfires up into there. And those are guys crossing or attempting to come downhill. So you will be able to pick, pick apart guys who are out in this little open air first crossfire. There are crossfire opportunities for both teams in this coming up into this neck right here and taking shots into the sides of the brawl that's going on. There's not any crossfire real opportunities here. There is a possibility, let's go ahead and use the red color. There is a possibility of the red team coming up here and potentially getting shots into guys' sides right there. And the same thing for the green coming up and getting shots into the guys' sides who are over here. Just using this rock formation right here. But what you have to watch out for is what's not really a crossfire opportunity, but you've got the, in the case of the greens, in the case of the red, You've got the TD sitting down there waiting for you to show your face and pop you right there. But there are some cross, some various crossfire opportunities in this brawling area based on the rocks, the potential of the rocks, and really this flat area. And whether you've won the flat area or won this area and being able to crossfire into there. There's not a whole lot of crossfire opportunity down here. Basically, it's just a pretty much straight on brawl unless you can win high or low and come around behind them. In which case, it's mostly just a flanking opportunity at that point. And really, folks, that's pretty much it. it. There is a possibility of winning in this direction or pushing down this direction and then having fire into here or here. But that's really just kind of late game pickup game stuff. As far as just setting up crossfires, there's just not a whole lot going on on this map because of just these ridiculous, you know, these two behemoths here, ridiculous dead areas all over the place on this map. Have I, have I uh, established my disdain for this map? It's atrocious. It really is. All right, All right. right. late game considerations. I've kind of covered them already. Hey, if I'm winning or losing, what do I do? It really goes with the general flow on this. As, so I, I talk mostly the winning side, but what if, I'm, what if I'm losing? So if I'm losing from the red area right here, the last ditch defensive positions are kind of here at the gate. Uh, there's some up here as well. Uh, the poten some potential for this this corner right here as they're coming at me, or the rock right here. There is a hold down spot right in this back corner. It's completely exposed to artillery because there's no cover, but it is a bit of a rise that you can get shots into them there. This whole area right through here rises up this direction, so there are some opportunities to sit back here and get some hold down shots on guys coming through the gate. There's a big gate area right there. The gate area itself can be a bit of a defensive spot if you can fight inside of it, potentially. Say you fell back from this area because you lost and you're worried about them pushing to your cap. That's a possibility there. There's several places along this edge that you can kind of defend, but they're not great because they're, this is so wide, you're going to get shots on you from kind of the, all directions or the sides right there. So it's, it's not amazing, but really all of the hell I'm, heck I'm losing what the heck I'm losing on this on this map is all backed by the cap. For the green side, it's very similar. You've got the buildings here. I've got an arrow. Don't want an arrow. You've got the buildings you can defend from. Buildings. You've got buildings here. You can defend kind of right here because this is a rise. This rock formation is a place to defend potentially. Here is not great for defense. Make a box because they just have fire. They just have shots down on you from here. So you really don't want to be in this area. You need to be around these rocks or hiding out between these, between, behind these corners right here. And again, the defensive positions are all about the 
the defensive positions over on this side are all about the cap. Remember I mentioned earlier though, this area here is a bit more viable than this area for the red is right here. So I don't really recommend, I don't really recommend hanging out right now. Nah, I got the wrong color. I don't really recommend hanging out right here as the red guy trying to stop him here just because this rise gives a lot, a lot of shots down onto you here. But you don't have the same problem really. This is a much closer choke point and is more analogous. This position is more analogous to this gate situation right here, which is interesting because the gate situation on the green side is on this side and the gate situation is over on this side as opposed to being complete mirror images. It's a little bit more open over here coming from the top. So that is a bit of a, that is a bit of a difference or a slight imbalance, if you will, on the two sides that I think is kind of, kind of interesting. It's easier for the greens to defend here and it's easier for the reds to defend right here, but that's the really losing situation. If you lose up here, there's not a really, not really a lot of places to fall back, especially if you lose up on, on the top because you're just running down a hill and getting shot in the back. There's just really no place to go hide. And typically if you've lost up in the Northeast and you're running down this hill, either from the, the red or the green, just give a green arrow here. If you're running away off this hill, uh, unfortunately you're probably taking fire from guys who have owned this up here or potentially taking fire from guys who have won up here. Uh, usually when you're bugging out up here, you've also kind of lost the middle and you're going to get shot in the side trying to get away. So that's the other reason why I don't like the Northeast too much. It's kind of a win or die spot. You go there and die in place or you win and you don't have a lot of option <laughs> other than that. All right. So that is help I'm winning and help I'm losing. All right, guys. All right, so that's Empire's Border. I would say, as a general rule, this is the most important critical terrain. This needs to be watched and contested. This is useful only in certain situations. It, again, does need to be watched. You don't want to let it be completely open. But as a general rule, I try to go here, potentially here, if I'm a light or medium. My last choice is up here in the Northeast. All right, that's all I've get for all I've got all I've get all I've got for Empire's Border. So get out there and uh, let me know what you think down below. If you have any more options or possibilities or inputs, go ahead and throw them in there so we can all learn. That's all I've got for now. We will see ya.